Are the challenges of life keeping you discouraged? I have nothing better to do with the rest of my life than work with God to straighten out the part I've already messed up. Discover the key to getting your life back on track next. progress, there's a type of birthing that has to go on. And although I know there are a few people who claim that they've had children without any pain, I wasn't one of them. <laughs> and uh, so I can relate to the pain involved in birthing things. As I look back at my own ministry, God placed a call on my life back in 1976, one morning while I was making my bed. And I didn't understand how all of this would come to pass. I just thought it would just happen, you know? God said, I'm calling you to it, and so it'll just happen. Well, it took a lot longer than I would have ever thought, and it was a lot harder than I could have ever imagined. And uh, 28 years later, now here we are doing the things that God spoke to us about way back then, but it happened in stages and degrees. Little by little, we'd go for a while doing something, then God would promote us. Every time there was a time of big promotion, Satan also launched a major attack. 1 Corinthians 16, 9 says, wide door of opportunity opened unto me and with it many adversaries. People today are very impatient. They want everything right away. They don't in general, not everybody, but especially, I think, in our generation today, the younger generation, I don't mean that as always a put-down because there's a lot of wonderful young people. We, we have several young people at our ministry that have really helped to bring us up higher into the next level because sometimes they have fresh, innovative ideas that some of us that are a little bit older maybe have gotten stuck in our old ways and we need somebody to come along and blast us out, you know? Our son said a very important thing to me. Uh, everything that we did at the ministry had to be colors that I liked. Like, you know, I don't like certain colors, so I wouldn't let him use those colors in our magazine. And if I didn't like a tape cover, then it didn't go. And if I didn't like a book cover, it didn't go. And I mean, my heart was right. I said, well, it's my ministry. I need to like what's going on because it represents me. Uh, but this is what my son said to me, and it was an eye-opener for me. He said, Mom, God didn't call you to minister to yourself. <laughs> well, I mean, it was a word in due season for me, and I realized that God was saying, you know, just because you don't like orange maybe doesn't mean that nobody likes orange. And so if you're trying to minister to all the people, then let's cut loose a little bit here and start doing some things that everybody likes and not just what you like. So I thank God for our younger generation, and I don't mean this as a put down at all, but I think you also realize that we also have some sectors of the younger generation that have different ideas than we did. When I say we, I mean some of us that are, you know, maybe 40, 50, 60 years old or older. You know, when, uh, when I started to work, you started at the bottom. You didn't think that was a put down. You didn't think that was a problem. You worked your way to the top. You proved yourself before you were promoted. You didn't expect to go to work and make the same salary that somebody would that had already been there 10 or 15 years. But today, people have a different mentality. I mean, it is amazing what people want to come to work for you. And then half the time, you've got to counsel them four times a month to keep them up and running. And it really sometimes gets a little bit ridiculous. It's like, you're hired to work. You're hired to work for me. You're hired to do what I want you to do. I'll pay you good. I'll treat you good. But you have to realize 
that there's a price that you pay for progress. And I think a lot of times today people just don't know how to work their way through things. They just want everything given to them and, and put on them. And it's really not biblical. We don't even really enjoy things and appreciate things if we don't have to put out a little bit of effort to get them. How many okay so far? All right. So I hope today, not only the people here in the room, but the millions that will watch this by television, I hope that if some people have a bad attitude that this program will help them lose it and get a better attitude. Because I believe unless we have the right attitude that God really can't bless us. We may manipulate and finagle around and make some person bless us, but it'll never be a blessing that will really take root in our life and cause good fruit because it's only the blessings of God that really last. Promotion doesn't really come from man. True promotion comes from God. So I want to talk to you today about the power of diligence. Basically, we're calling the message today, Keep On Keeping On. I believe that one of the things that will help any person succeed is if they, just, if they just plain refuse to ever give up. Hebrews 11, 6 is a wonderful scripture. It says, Without faith it's impossible to please God and be satisfactory to Him. And whoever would come near to God must believe that God exists and that He is the rewarder of those who earnestly and diligently seek Him. Now see, it doesn't even just say that God's a rewarder of those who seek Him. And sometimes we leave words out. Even if we read the words, we don't really center on those words. We just kind of pick up what we think is the main theme here. And I want you to understand that that doesn't say that God rewards those who seek Him. It says God rewards those who earnestly and diligently seek Him. I have been diligently seeking God for 28 years this past February. Diligently. There have been very few days that have gone by that I haven't spent some time in the Word. I don't imagine there's been one day that's gone by that I haven't prayed and talked to God. 28 years of doing that produces a lot of good fruit in your life. So often people look at the success that somebody has and they're jealous of it. But I tell people all the time, don't be jealous of what somebody else has if you don't want to do what they did to get it. I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish. Well, I wish, I wish I had a new car. I wish I had a new house. I wish I had money saved. Well, you know, people who have money saved didn't get it by wishing. <laughs> you know how they got it? They saved it. And you know what they had to do? They had to do without some things that maybe you weren't willing to do without, and now they have what you want, but you didn't want to pay the price that they paid to get it. And the same thing goes for all of us. I'm not just harping at you. I'm just saying that whoever we are, there's really no point in looking at what somebody else has and wishing or being jealous because really God's no respecter of persons, and the same spiritual laws will work for anybody who will work the laws. See, not all of you are convinced of that because, to be honest, some people want to just sit around and feel sorry for themselves. It's not fair, and I wish. I just didn't get a good start. You know, hey, I didn't get a good start either, but you can have a good finish. Yeah. Amen? Matter of fact, I think when you didn't have a good start and you, you are determined to have a good finish, that's what really gives extra glory to God. The people who had nothing going for them and turn out right. That's a double glory to the Lord. So if we diligently seek God, He will, what? Reward us. Keep on keeping on. In Proverbs 21, 5, you can turn there. The Bible says, The thoughts of the steadily diligent tend only toward plenty. But everyone who is impatient and hasty hastens only to want. Read it again. The thoughts of the steadily diligent end up bringing plenty into that person's life. But everyone who is impatient and hasty and wants to have things right away and wants to have things without paying the price, all that person ever has in their life is want, 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 and more want. 
That's such a good scripture. It's basically saying, if you'll be diligent, you'll end up with plenty of everything that you want and need. And if you're hasty and impatient, you'll end up with nothing. All you got to do is just keep on keeping on. You know, we get tired of trying to do what's right. The devil says it's not working anyway, you might as well quit. He tries to wear us out. But God put something in my heart this morning that I think may be the most valuable thing that I say to you today. And that is, is he said, don't just tell people to just keep doing what's right and keep doing what's right and keep doing what's right, but tell them when they get tired of doing what's right to say to themselves, you know what? I can do this one more time. See, that's something we can bite off and believe. But sometimes if we look at, well, I don't know, what if it takes years? I don't know if I can do that. So we look too far in the future sometimes and we're defeated. But if we look at it one day at a time, or one thing at a time, we can handle that because God gives us grace for each day and He gives us grace for each thing. Let's just say maybe you're dealing with somebody that's really hard to get along with and you just have to keep forgiving them and forgiving them and forgiving them. Well, the day is going to come when the devil is going to say to you, they are never going to change. And if you're going to stay in a relationship with them, you are going to have to put up with this the rest of your life. And the minute that you get into that kind of thinking, you feel defeated, you feel overwhelmed, you're ready to quit and give up, because you say, I can't do this. But if you will say back to the enemy, I'm not looking at the rest of my life. I believe God will give me grace one day at a time, one thing at a time. And right now, I don't feel like I can do this another hundred times, but I can do it one more time. Yeah. And then the next day, you may have to say it again, and the next day, you may have to say it again. You know, I believe this is going to help me in lots of areas too, because, for example, like exercise. I have certain exercises that I do, and some of them I really need to do to keep certain areas of my back strong. I've walked on these hard platforms and high heels for so many years that I started having some back problems a few years ago, and, and I've got a good set of exercises, and if I do them, my back stays good and strong. But just like everybody else, you know, exercise is one thing that it's easy to kind of backslide in. And uh, I'm supposed to be doing like three sets of these different exercises that I do. Well, lately, you know, I've been doing one and maybe two. And, you know, my mind says, I just can't do this. It's just too much. And I thought this morning, you know, when, I, when I've done one and I don't feel like I can do another, what I need to say to myself is, I can do this one more time. I can do one more set of these. And then when it gets time to do the third one, say, you know what? I can do one more set of these. And I really believe that just this little bit of insight is going to help a lot of people because I really do believe that it's our own thinking that overwhelms us. We look at things too long term and we feel like there's no way I can do that. Absolutely no way that I can do that. But I really believe that I can just tell you this is a word from God and if you will start looking at things in, in littler chunks and you will start saying, I can do this one more time. I can, I can get this one room in my house cleaned up today. Then you go to the next one. Well, I can, now I, I can get this room clean. I can pay this bill off. I'm not going to look at the other 50. I don't know what I'm going to do with, but I'm going to work on this one. I can pay this one off. And then when that one's paid off, you say, you know what, now I can pay this one off. And see, the whole point is, is if you're diligent and you keep on keeping on and you refuse to quit, someday you'll be out of debt. Someday you'll have everything in your house in order. Someday you'll have your body good and strong and you'll, you'll have, you know, good muscles, but you're not going to get it by wishing. Or let's just take a diet. I can't do this. I'm going to die. I'm so hungry. I'm going to die. <laughs> How about just saying, you know, I can, I, one more, I can make it one more hour. You know, my stomach's growling. I feel like I'm going to faint, but I can make it one more hour. I can do this, you know. Or I can last one more day. Or what about if you're trying to quit smoking or you're trying to quit any kind of bad habit? Just say, I can do this one more day. Because see, what the devil wants us to think is we're feeling misery. We're feeling discomfort. It's hard. And the devil says, it's going to be this way forever. And so we look at forever and we think, I can't do it. I just can't do this. One day at a time. One thing at a time. Everybody say out loud, I can do this one more time. I say, I can do this one more day. I can do this one more day. And you realize, of course, that those days add up to months and the months add up to years. 
and then pretty soon you've got a victory that everybody else will be jealous of and they won't have it because they didn't want to do what you did to get it. You know, the thoughts of the steadily diligent tend to plenty. Well, our thoughts have a lot to do with our life. And to be honest with you, even if you're going to think the way God tells you to think, you're going to have to be diligent to cast down wrong thoughts, to cast out of your mind thoughts about people that you know you shouldn't be having, and to fill your mind with good things. Can I tell you that it requires diligence? Can I tell you that you will probably never, ever, ever have one day in your Christian life where you won't have to take authority over some kind of wrong thinking? Well, I just wish I didn't have such trouble with my mind. Wish and won't get it. You got to retrain yourself. You got you to renew your mind. And you have to learn so much of the Word that you will instantly realize when Satan puts a wrong thought in your mind. You know, I, don't, I mean, there was a time in my life when I could sit around and think judgmental thoughts about somebody for days and not even realize what I was doing. But now, I mean, if I find myself combing my hair or something and putting on my makeup in the morning and I'm thinking some kind of judgmental, critical thoughts about somebody who aggravated me, it doesn't take very long and the Holy Ghost makes me aware of it. Now I have a choice to one more time cast down those wrong thoughts that I wish would leave me alone. Is anybody hearing me today? Amen. See, well, I wish the devil would leave me alone. Well, I wish my mind didn't give me so much trouble. Well, I wish I didn't have such trouble with my emotions. I wish I was more disciplined but that's not going to change a thing. The only thing that's going to change anything is if you make your mind up that you're going to cooperate with the Holy Spirit, that every single day, with God's help, you're going to be diligent to do what's right. And you make your mind up that you're not going to do it just one time. You may only do it one time a day, but you're going to do it and 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 do it. And if you're the only one doing it, you're still going to do it. If it becomes unpopular, you're still going to do it. See, we make a lot of silly excuses. Well, you know, nobody else is doing it. Well, you know what I found out a long time ago? It doesn't relieve me of the responsibility to do what's right just because I'm around a bunch of other people that don't want to do what's right. We've got to be like Joshua. You decide for yourself what you're going to do, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. He made his decision. The thoughts of the diligent tend only to plenty. The individual who's impatient wants to get everything without going through the process will always have want and lack in his life. That's why we have to realize that if we're impatient and we want everything right away, we will end up with nothing. You might as well be the kind of person when you start into something, you just say to yourself, this is going to take a while. You need to lose 20 pounds. It's going to take a while. You need to get your body in shape. It's going to take a while. You've overspent, now you need to get out of debt. It's going to take a while. You haven't balanced your checkbook in a year and a half. It's going to take a while. Come on. People need to start doing what the Holy Spirit is leading them to do. And when you look at the mess that it took you 30 years to make, don't faint and give up but say, I can do this with God's help one day at a time, one thing at a time. I have nothing better to do with the rest of my life than work with God to straighten out the part I've already messed up. The Lord's not going to critically judge us when He sends Jesus back to get us if we haven't arrived, but He is going to be disappointed if He doesn't find us pressing on. We need to stay in the process, pressing on. He, uh, Proverbs 10, 4. You're in Proverbs anyway, so just go back to Proverbs chapter 10, verse 4. He becomes poor who works with a slack and an idle hand. But the hand of the diligent makes him rich. I like that. Proverbs is a book of wisdom. It's a book of principles that will usher a person into the very best that God has to offer him. If we observe and practice the principles in the book of Proverbs, we will see wonderful things come to pass in our life. I encourage you to read Proverbs. It's a good thing even to just read one of the Proverbs every day. Amen? There's enough for every day of the month, and if you read one every day, in a year, you would read the book of Proverbs 12 times. Many people practice that. I do that at different seasons in my life. Proverbs is full of principles that if you apply them, they'll be life-changing. 
If Proverbs states that a diligent person will have plenty and be rich, then we should find out what diligence is and how to be diligent if we desire to have the promise that we find in Proverbs. You see, so many people get excited about the promise, but they don't want to hear anything about what it's going to take from them to see that promise released in their life. You know, we've gone through a long season in the church of what many have called the Word and Faith Movement or the Prosperity Movement or the Success Teaching or whatever it is you may want to call it. For years and years, it seemed like all we heard from Christian circles was you couldn't have anything, you had to be poor, you know, you had to bear this cross which was sickness and disaster and just be happy with an awful life because after all, you know, God loves you and that's enough. Well. The Bible says that God wants us to be blessed. He wants us to prosper. He wants us to be healthy. He wants us to be successful. Everything we lay our hand to can prosper and succeed. So we've gone through a lot of years of teaching now, at least in, in some sectors of Christianity. Not all sectors are teaching this, but I teach and believe that God wants us to be blessed. He wants us to prosper. And I'm grateful somebody taught me that or I'd still be back believing that it was wrong to have anything. So I'm grateful that God taught me that, but I went through a period of confusion in my life because 20 some odd years ago, I was being taught about these things that God wanted me to have, but nobody was telling me what I was going to have to go through. So every time I would step out to believe that God wanted something better for me, the enemy would oppose me just exactly like it says he will, will in 1 Corinthians 16, 9, a door of opportunity opens. With it comes adversaries. I take a step to go forward. The devil takes a step to drive me backwards. And then I would be defeated by that because I thought, well, what's wrong? I'm believing the promises. What's wrong? I, I bought the tape. What's wrong? I went to the seminar. What's wrong? But I didn't understand that I had to press through some things and I had to go through some things and that I had to not only do what... See, you can't have a lifetime of a mess and then make one right choice. And have it all disappear. And to be honest with you, people that are lazy and passive and lethargic and people that are very impatient and people who don't want to go through anything, people who feel like that everything in life should be easy, make everything happen for me real quick because I can't take it if it's hard. It's all just too much for me. You better get a different mentality. Because if you want to have what Jesus wants you to have, you're going to have to go through some things. And you're not always going to have somebody that's going to be able to do it for you. You're going to have to face your own Goliaths and you're going to have to defeat your own giants. And you're going to have to do it over and over and over and over and over. Diligence means steady application in business. And I want to make a point out of that because interestingly enough, every success, every spiritual success doesn't just require prayer and nothing else. We pray, but there's also business to be attended to. Well, today we've been discussing the power of diligence. And basically, we've been talking about never giving up. You know, the main price of progress is pain. But it's the diligent, the people who will go through whatever they need to go through, who really get to know Jesus and live a powerful life. You know, God really doesn't want us to suffer. But if we'll just go through what we need to go through and get to the end, God will bring us immeasurable victory and you can enjoy a life that will be absolutely amazing to you. Remember, the only way out is through. Well, today we're offering a four-part teaching series entitled The Price of Progress. Also, we want to give you as a bonus gift my mini book entitled Do It Afraid. This little book is powerful and has brought deliverance to literally thousands and thousands of people. If you stay with us, we're going to give you all the information that you need to take advantage of this offer. We all have goals. We all want to move forward. We all want to get to the next level. But progress doesn't come cheap. It almost always costs us something. Pain, money, time. But no matter what the cost, the reward is greater success, happiness, and fulfillment in all we do. I'm so glad that I didn't give up in those early years. I'm so glad I didn't quit because now I've made it to the other side, amen? Now I'm living in the reward. I'm living in the victory, and you will too. 
Discover how to get through the tough times and move forward towards your goals in life. The Price of Progress, a four-part series by Joyce Meyer, available this week along with the mini book, Do It Afraid. To get yours, contact us at Joyce Meyer Ministries using the information on your screen or log on to JoyceMeyer.org. I was completely addicted and I had no idea. I didn't even know I was addicted to approval. It's like my whole life I spent trying to make other people happy. My feelings were always getting hurt. I couldn't measure up to what people wanted me to be. I just craved approval and sometimes I think I still do. I don't think I'm ever really me. I'm always so worried about what others think of me. But now, things are different. Now, a new book by best-selling author Joyce Meyer, Approval Addiction. Inside, you'll find creative new ways to discover a whole new perspective on living life. Know yourself better and avoid selfishness while doing what's right for you. Approval Addiction by Joyce Meyer. Pre-order your copy today by calling right now. Use the information on your screen or log on to JoyceMeyer.org. Do it now. Pre-orders of Approval Addiction will be shipped April 5th. Reserve yours today. I'm putting out fires all day long. If I want to get home, I like to make some fire of my own. There's more to most people than meets the eye. Just like in the monthly magazine from Joyce Meyer. Inside, you'll find tons of new and interesting features, including articles, interviews, and fascinating stories of people who have discovered how to enjoy every day of their lives. Look inside and join everyday life today. To get your free subscription, just call and request and join Everyday Life magazine. Joyce Meyer believes that God has a future and purpose for your life and that you have an incredible destiny. Your monthly partnership plays an important key to that destiny as Joyce can impact your life on a regular basis, giving you new insights and information into God's Word through television, teaching tapes, our magazine, monthly letters, and more. Plus, when you join us in partnership, you're playing a vital role in making a difference in the lives of millions of people around the world. So call or write us and help us take this life-changing message to every nation, every city, every day. Plus, if you have any needs or prayer requests, please let us know and we'll agree with you for God to make a difference. We also encourage you to check out our website at www.joycemeyer.org where you can find important ministry updates, access Joyce's teaching resources, her travel schedule, visit our online bookstore, and more. So contact us today as you continue the journey enjoying everyday life. It's time to start.